was a warm evening on December 8, 2012. Culiacán was beginning its weekend festivities, and among them was a 36-year-old named Leopoldo Ochoa Juarez, also known as Polo Ochoa, or El Pluma Blanca. Ochoa was en route to a get-together in the ritzy section of the city. The atmosphere inside the two vehicles was festive. The three were looking forward to another fiesta full of women, booze, and live music. As the white GMC truck flew past, people on the street had no idea. The man driving was a billionaire trafficker who had recently closed a major deal in Europe. He bought $300 million worth of precursor chemicals from Dutch companies. The chemicals were to be used to manufacture meth and fentanyl in Ochoa's clandestine labs. Ochoa was a high-level trafficker. In fact, he was moving more coke than El Chapo at the time. He was wealthy and a jet setter. He used to run with the sons of other cartel bosses. His best friends and partners were Cesar Gastelam Serrano and Juan Ignacio Esparagosa, El Azul's son, the two heavyweights that rarely make the headlines but were at the top of the trafficking world. The trio were known to move massive amounts of cocaine to Spain, Italy, Russia, China, and even Lebanon. Ochoa invested in and laundered a large amount of his money in Dubai, where he also bought a luxurious condo in one of the high-rise towers. He was incredibly successful and was known to move large amounts of money. At one point, El Chapo borrowed 30 million from Ochoa to finance a large cocaine shipment, and this is where it started to go downhill. A couple days before his execution, Ochoa threw a lavish party. Banda de Recodo, Los Lucanes de Tijuana, Roberto Tapia, among others, performed at this event. Late into the night, a drunk Ochoa began to talk reckless. He begins to brag about the money that El Chapo owes him, the fact that El Chapo is taking a while to pay back the money, and that he didn't even consider 30 million a big deal. One thing about that world? is that reputation is key to successful partnerships. And what Ochoa was doing was crossing the line. He was bad-mouthing one of the bosses. So the Chapo went to Mayo. He goes to him and says, basically, I want to kill this guy for disrespect. Ochoa was affiliated with the Zambada family, although Ochoa ran his own operation. El Mayo guaranteed his safety in Culiacán. He was also affiliated with El Russo, the former Zambada security chief that was defeated by Los Chapitos. El Mayo eventually relented and gave his okay to have Ochoa killed. Although the reason for his death was the disrespectful nature of his words, the real reason was pure greed. And like so many traffickers before him, Ochoa would end up the victim of his own friends. El Chapo borrowed 30 million from Ochoa. El Chapo figured at some point he'd rather not pay the 30 million back. So when word got back to El Chapo about Ochoa being scandalous, it was the perfect excuse to get rid of a competitor and take over part of his business, while at the same time keeping the money. On that December evening, Ochoa was on his way to meet friends. Since he was on friendly territory and his compadre was the legendary Mayo Zambada, he went out with only two bodyguards in an unarmored GMC truck. Normally, he was driven around in his armored truck with at least two SUVs full of gunmen. That day, however, he was moving light. Ochoa was driving the white truck with one bodyguard, while the other gunman followed behind in the Jeep Cherokee. All of a sudden, four trucks appear out of nowhere. They come to a screeching halt in front and behind the two vehicles. The attackers let off a barrage of automatic fire towards Ochoa's truck and the Jeep Cherokee. The two vehicles were torn to shreds. Ochoa and his bodyguards never had time to react. All three were killed. Like many families before, Ochoa's family swore revenge. They put million dollar bounties on the gunman and commander who were responsible for the murder of the beloved Polo, including Chapo. Listen, you have to understand that in the cartel world, having money is important, but having money and muscle is even better. Ochoa had a huge bank account, most likely billionaire status, but he lacked muscle. And in any case, Ochoa was not a violent trafficker, so El Chapo took his chances and killed him. The order was given to Aureliano Guzman Loera, 
aka El Guano. El Guano is Chapo Guzman's brother, and it was his gunmen that were responsible for the attack. The Ochoa family not only issued bounties, but also sent a hit squad to find and kill those responsible. A few gunmen were kidnapped and killed before El Mayo and Chapo sent word to the Ochoa family that they were turning over the people responsible for the murder of Polo. One of El Guano's security chiefs, known as Popeye, and his brother R4 were sold out to the Ochoa family. They were eventually killed by a hit squad. El Chapo and El Mayo decided it was not worth a lengthy and bloody war between the two sides. The Civil War of 2008 was still fresh in the memory of Culiacan residents. After his death, Sicario Chief El Russo was left in charge of his territory. Ochoa fell victim to the paranoia and envy that go hand in hand with the drug industry. Ochoa was a mover and shaker, and he was amassing a fortune, and was now collaborating with Los Queenies. That was also part of the reason he was killed. El Chapo and El Mayo feared the ambitions of Ochoa. In the end, a civil war was averted. Ochoa's body was laid to rest in a grand mausoleum. His friends, which included El Chino Antrax, sent massive wreaths to his funeral and paid for musicians to perform for Polo. One last time.